So I was just, I'm to turn my music down. I was just in my Queen's School group and going through just, ugh, some of the most delicious expansions and words that have made me burst into tears about how marriages have been saved and women are opening up places of them that they never have before. And it keeps being this one theme that keeps coming back that we're still cycling around. And I was about to write back to someone in that group. And then I thought, better to just do it here because this is probably going to be medicine for you if this is your story too. So before we get there, I'm going to say yesterday I did a uh, live for Embark on starting to change the conversation around health, that it's simply the physical body and there's nothing else that relays into that. So today I have a cold song. And as a naturopath, every time I was sick, I used to berate myself and I used to get, what haven't I done? What do I need to do better? You know, all of these things. And yet I've come to realize so much that's different. So a cold sore for me is not what I was taught in university. It's not what is the common exploration out there in the world, which is you're doing too much, you're going too hard, um, you're consuming too much arginine foods, you're not eating enough lysine, you're not having enough um, antioxidants or antiviral herbs. It's because your gut's not formed enough. All of those things, right? It's the allergens, it's all of the physical body. But do you know what a cold sore is for me? Do you know when I get a cold sore? when I am stopping the flow of my voice, when I am suppressing and kind of contracted in this, Ugh, can I get this out? Is this safe? Or I'm overthinking what should just be a free flowing movement of energy through my body of message of saying yes to the part of me that's here to do this work. And I'm releasing him back and I meet all of those edges all over again. I got a cold sore when I released Queen School and then I disappeared and I went, ah, oh, God, this feels so much better getting this creative flow and energy like out of my body. And then the vitality came back. Hey, Liz. And here I am going through the same shedding process because this is the humanness. And this is, for me, still a super vulnerable edge to be out there as a practitioner of health saying, here's the human factor, right? Here's the part that still gets contracted and contorted and I still ask myself to do the work that I ask women to do to release what ends up contracting down into a physical manifestation, which for me is cold sores. Every time I stop my flow of creativity, every time I overthink and contract and start to bring that energy instead of it being the purpose of love and healing, which is to move outwards and I start bringing it, closing it in on my body and being very self-focused, I can't, who am I to, what am I doing, blah, 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 all of that stuff, right? And I like stop that flow of energy. It manifests in this because I'm so fucking angry at myself for doing that, right? And there's this bubbling anger and expression that needs to like come out. Why are you stopping it? So here I am in all of the glory, right? Saying to you, this is exactly what I was talking about yesterday. This is it, right? It doesn't matter how much lysine I consume, how much antivirals I have, how many amino acids I have, what I cut out of my diet. If I am contracting the flow of my creativity, energy and healing, I get a cold sore. I can do any diet you like, but the minute I do that, here it is. So it's such a beautiful reminder for me instead of contorting into this masculine view of the body which is x equals y and when you do this this heals is to look at what is the message here what is my physical body actually expressing how can i love this into light rather than thinking it shouldn't be here because that's never the purpose right so that was the side note so i thought i'd start with but onto this post that i was like oh, i have to write about this and then thought I'd come in here. So I'm gonna keep it anonymous, so you might find me editing a few bits here and there. I was taught that it was feminine responsibility not to attract dangerous male attention. Don't dress provocatively. Don't flirt. 
don't be alone. Don't put yourself in an inappropriate situation. I'm even scared of being attractive to my husband. There was young women disowned, lost their jobs, families discredited, young couples made to marry. This is all in my younger years. I joke that I'm still afraid of getting uh, pregnant, unwed, even though I've been married for 20 years. I'm still afraid of being an unwed mother, having to confess to my parents that I made the wrong choice, that I let myself get carried away in the moment, that I lost control. Oh, the control. No wonder I'm so hooked on it. I'm so scared of losing control and I'm seeing this in many areas and I'm crying as I write it now. Like, this is why I love women so much and I love tears. Like tears for me are the sweetest angel song because I know in that moment they've touched the exact cord of the string of their body of tension that wants to be released. I know that's where it's at because that is the space in which transformation happens. That's the spot where they let go and they for themselves like put it all together and they have the ability in that moment to completely transform something. That is where the gold is at and tears are what happens when our body has a spontaneous release of something its humanness can't hold anymore and stress hormones come out and the body softens and relaxes and new areas open that weren't able to before. Like that is the sweet spot. Why are we so fucking afraid of tears, of crying, of being seen in vulnerability? Because it's where the thing you want is, right? So I just like, I hear that and I'm like, oh, this is the evocation of the feminine, right? You speak with such clarity and you move it as a feeling open and through your body. And I am evoked by that. I feel it with you. I want to move it with you. That's the power you have as a feminine, right? Not because I think this and say that it should work better, but because I, my, the clarity of my transition can't help but evoke a reaction in you. And this is what I talk about with the feminine and the expression of the masculine and all of these words this beautiful woman has written. I keep thinking, oh, Yes, there's so many stories. Yes, there's a thousand ways we could go. But what if also we have been totally taught and conditioned that men are something they're not and women are something they're not? What if in every man exists this beautiful spot where they want to rise to be the king that no one has ever seen in them before, that they themselves don't know how to tap into, that they are just waiting to be moved by you, to experience the flow of energy that they connect to through your body, right? And yet as women, it's so scarce because we've been so conditioned for so many reasons, for millennia of feminine suppression and patriarchal control. It's the one essence of the feminine that overpowers the masculine, right? Because it's the life energy, it's the creation energy. It is more powerful, this sensation and urge and movement in the body than what the mind can conceive of, right? So the way to feel back into control is to like keep a lid on that. And so we have all of these generations of female trauma, and feminine suppression and all of that that just condenses down in our nervous system. And then on top of that, you have life experience like this woman, you have family and cultural patterning and all of that condenses into this tight little bubble that says, it's not safe. My feminine is not safe. I can't let her out. And so I'm contracting and contorting and shoving it down and wondering why I'm so shut down and exhausted and can't connect and desperately unhappy and no desire and so many, like I could just go on so many things, right? But what if it all resided in this very part of your body 
that was when I become the free flowing beacon of love, when there isn't scarcity around me and when there isn't scarcity in the world of feminine light, because it is life essence. It's what feeds the masculine core. It's what inspires inspiration and has them leave their head and move into their body where they experience the greatest level of freedom, right? This is why it's taken in so many toxic ways. But what if there was no scarcity around it? What if it just was everything it was supposed to be? What if someone else's experience of you has nothing to do with you? What if you are not responsible for someone else's arousal? What if you realize that the power that you have stored in your body exists within you to maneuver and to be in a space of energetic control as opposed to shutdown and contraction control with the mind, right? Because this isn't safe to be here. What if this was a really beautiful space to live where you found all of your power and all of your boundaries and you worked out exactly how to move someone else's energy when you did that and you opened up to seeing this beautiful light in the men around you who are here to protect you and provide for you and help you fuel that to be everything you want to be. What if flirtation doesn't mean I want to have sex with you? What if this is just an energetic exchange where you and I are in a polarity and we have this conversation or this moment where we both leave brighter? What if it doesn't have to equal, I'm having sex with you because that's what our culture has taught us, so you better keep a lid on that shit, versus, oh, wow, life energy. Oh, look what happens when we're here and all of a sudden I'm raised to fuller heights because I'm part of a whole and there's an energetic exchange and you're raised to greater heights. And what will both of us do with that energy when we leave this conversation or this moment today? What will happen in that one moment where you offer someone just that healing light that you are? What will they do with that for the rest of their day? What will you do with that energy? Right, this is, the, this is the creativity of the feminine. This is the muse. This is the ability to start to realize your power exists in your body and not in your head. This is when you untangle all of the meanings and the attachments and the stories that you have to what the feminine is and what she does versus fully experiencing the power and the ability to manipulate energy that comes from being open in your body. What if you being full flowing, open invitation of love that you get to work with in your own body and experience is exactly the medicine that this world needs? That someone could simply walk past you and feel a rise in their body. What if you were absolutely designed to be that medicine? What if that's your purpose or part of it? What if that was a really safe place for you to be, you know? What if stepping into your beauty was just an expression of the divinity within you? What if this feminine body in all of its beauty could just be like the touch of the divine, like it's, it's love, right? This is love incarnate. You are designed to be the free-flowing beacon of love, not your habituated responses that close it down, not the habituated learnings of how you show up in relationship or with clients. What if the art of that energetic movement of flirtation of opening someone else's body and having them feel a rise in energy was something you could maneuver more masterfully? What if it wasn't something you needed to be scared of? What if within that space you learnt safety 
that came with a lit up life in a way you've never known before. What if you realized all of the learnings of control that you have come with have been there to make other people feel in control and safe? What if the opposite were true for you? I think about this like every day, there would hardly be a day when I walk past the mailman as he's riding past, I let my body be open. I let it be an experience of energy. What if you are literally the feminine goddess, the embodiment of life energy, of creation, of literally completely changing in a moment someone's physiology simply by offering them a different wave of energy? What if there was no scarcity of that? And what if in doing that, you felt into pieces of your body that you haven't before and your power and your life and your vitality and... <sighs> I think about this with my son. You know, I've been thinking recently, I, I might do a video on it because I actually desperately enjoy this experience of my son who's nearly 14 and he does not realize, I don't think yet, the power that he has in his embodiment um, around women. So any practitioner I've taken him to see who's female, any of my friends who just come to, you know, hang out or whatever, they kind of move around him and they're like, oh. And they go all kind of sweating, like, he's so divine. Oh my God, just even his energy. And I'm like, I know, I know. Because we teach love. There's no scarcity here. He can obtain his sense of king and delicious masculine that you just want to, like, I don't know be around and open up into because he's been allowed to feel that part of him because it's been allowed to grow up within him it hasn't been castrated or restricted out of him he's learned what it feels like to be in a body rather than just in a head What if the energy that you are is exactly the medicine of that moment? I really honestly move about my day thinking that. My movement, my embodiment as a feminine being is here to make this world better. Not just to keep it for mine. And the more I open up that channel, the more I realise this influence and like... You know, I don't think I'm articulating it because I'm just feeling it all. <laughs> but what I, I think what I want to leave you with is just this, this. Don't dress provocatively. Don't flirt. Don't be alone. Don't be inappropriate or put yourself in an inappropriate situation. Yes, when you're fully in touch with your sovereignty, you will selectively choose where you lead yourself and who you are. Um, choose to open up around you're not just opening to anyone willy-nilly you have a mastery in an art form around being able to sense people and places and movements and intuitively that becomes very much an embodied power this isn't you just open slather but this is about growing up this part of you that knows that that can sense that that can see the human in front of you and energetically touch into the very core of them and go, ah, oh, there you are. Or, oh, I see you and I know exactly what I'm doing here. That's a very different space to, I've got to keep a lid on it because what will happen? One is a space where I get to have the most control by actually stepping into the opposite of what I've been taught that is. 
one is empowering and enlivening and open up opens up your feminine essence where we can just remove all of this bullshit around scarcity and desire and motherhood and long-term monogamy and aging right I'm nearly 40 i have four kids i feel fucking magnetic i think that's what we're designed to feel I don't think my cellular structure is based on my age. I think it's utterly transformable by what I pulsate through my cells energetically because what are we if we're not atoms strung together by the nothingness and energy? So open up. Let yourself rewrite the story and attachments you have to flirtation because it is one of an energetic exchange and that is it. It is the medicine of this moment and that is it. It is a practice in presence and in honouring the centre of that other divine soul in front of you. It is not an invitation for you to enter my body. I don't know if there was anything in that for you, but I hope there is for my beautiful woman in Queen School. I'll post the link in there and we can continue those conversations in there. And if you would really love to come and learn with me, then the relationship space is Queen School. And Embark is the six months where I teach you how to embody that in a um, practitioner facilitator role where it's strong and deep and understands the movement of polarity in order to move and transform the person in front of you, to open up the healing that you do in a whole other way and to see them in a way that you've never seen them before. So that is what we'll be doing in Embark. So please check out both of those. I will pop the link here. And if you did get anything out of this, I'd love to know. <laughs> I'll say it.